Hey, how's it going? My name's Alex, and I want to welcome you back to Season 2 of the Hotshot News Network. Now, you may be new, and you might not even know what Hotshot News Network is, and that's okay, but basically, with my with the videos, I'm trying to review and see what other hotshotters are doing out there, what's cool, what's not cool, you know, stuff like that. Basically, just uh, reviewing other people's content, giving them suggestions, maybe highlighting some really excellent videos they had, stuff like that. And your second thought might be, Alex, hold on, you said welcome back. What does that mean? Yes, this is season two, actually. The first season, you could I'm calling it a season, but in reality, it was just, you know, the first time I tried this, it was... Well, I was on the road and so it was just in front of trucks audio was never good so it just didn't work out and so now that I'm in the garage I'm no longer on the road I'm gonna put together these videos and I don't know how often I'll upload them but hey let's get started all right first up we're talking about load tracking you know and it always was interesting to me the idea of tracking your freight how like you know when you order something online they scan your package and that scan is actually what they register as you're tracking not the actual location of your package nobody actually knows the location of the package or the location of the truck, right? So nobody knows like whether it's FedEx or Amazon or anything like that, right? Nobody knows the actual location on your package. They just go based off of when it was last scanned. And so that's a little bit different than the tracking they want in trucking, which is we want to know the location of your truck, which is a both I feel like an invasion of privacy a little bit, but uh, the point remains the same. Like, hey, someone's shipping a 50 to 100 to $200,000 piece of equipment with you. Uh, you know, if it was my equipment, I would want to know where it is too. But usually that's done with the driver's phone, um, you know, the driver's ELD, something like that. Uh, right here, Chris TV uploaded a, they snuck a tracking device onto my load. And the tracking device is an Apple AirTag, right? And it's like, it's kind of interesting seeing that this is where it's going. And I watched a couple other videos about AirTags. I don't know if you know if you don't know what they are. Apple released this tracking device that works kind of like Find My iPhone. And what happens is it lasts like six months to a year, something like that, on just a small battery. And whenever an iPhone comes within range, it grabs the location from that iPhone, or no, it sends the location to the iPhone. And so it communicates something, but that's all. So you, but, and at first they didn't have any way to know where they are. And so people have started to be tracked, getting tracked home and stuff like that. So it's, uh, the air tags are very, uh, somewhat or not very, but somewhat controversial. And so here they, they put it on this machinery, uh, and they tracked the driver this way. Now, I, I like a couple of months ago, I was thinking, I was like, man, why doesn't anybody use air tags for tracking? Literally, it was so funny. And so to see this video come up in my feed, I thought I was like, dude. Uh, so now keep in mind, if you have an iPhone, uh, it will tell you like, hey, your phone has been tracked. And if they stuck it in the load somewhere, uh, hey, that's you know it's their load they can kind of modify i guess how they want but super interesting video go ch uh, go check that out if you want to uh, take a look at like what it looks like on your phone because he shows his phone and stuff like that what it's like being tracked so uh so that's up there that's in the link below all right next up we got hotshot mac who is getting a who just got a brand new 2022 ram 5500 cabin chassis which uh you know is an interesting interesting choice um he did recently get his cdl so that's good news and, but the problem with a 5500 usually is that number one, it has the same Cummins and uh, six speed ice and transmission as all the other trucks, but it's geared at like 488 or 455 or whatever. And because it's geared like that, you at like 70 miles, R, uh, 70 miles an hour, your RPM is like at 2400, right? And so then your fuel is like six or seven miles to the gallon all the time. So it's, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I would have gone that route um, with a 5500 if I did just get my CDL. Uh, but still, the point made the same. Congratulations are in order. And it, it, it makes me think though, like I personally don't like CDL hotshot. I think it's uh, not not. And I've made numerous videos about this before. I'm not trying to like bat, talk bad about hotshot Mac. I, he's a great dude, actually. So, but the point remains the same: is that I don't like CDL hotshot because at the end of the day, you're still competing with non CDL hotshots for freight, and so the freight still goes really quickly, and so it's still hard to book loads, right? And so, <clears throat> I wish I wish him the best. I hope it works out. But based from the experience, and like I'm not even trying to, you know, I don't know. Uh, let's dig a little deeper. So three channels, right? If you remember, Dream Inspired, Hotshot Dave, and KDL Hotshot RV all have 5500s. All of them no longer in service. So it's like, 
Dude, every CDL hotshot, I mean, yes, this could be like a middle baby stepping stone um, to the semi maybe. And ultimately the main reason you want to do a stepping stone to a semi is I believe, you know, comment below, commercial financing is very hard to get if your CDL is under two years old. Very hard to get. So think about this. If you're going to go get your CDL and you think you're just going to go out there and go get a semi with these current prices, it's insane. And if your CDL is not two years old, then you might might not. So this is problem. This is oftentimes why people get a CDL hot shot. Moving on, we got a restoration. This looks like a Gator made trailer because it, ha it has like the cutouts and whatnot. So it looks like a nice trailer. And right here, unpredictable Steve just like they stripped it down, you know, peeled out the decals, redid all the wood, and they painted the whole thing, put a new deck over it. Um, really, really nice looking uh, trailer after the overhaul, you know? So it's actually kind of cool seeing that. That's uh, that's pretty neat. So I'm sure like this is, maybe this is way how you can think. Like, you know, I'm sure he got a decent deal because of the condition it was in. And maybe before you quit your job to go hotshot, before you do all that, maybe you just spend some time saving a ton of money, buy a trailer for cash, and uh, you know, get a good deal because it's beat up. You fix it up, do an overhaul like this while you still have your job, and then you can hit the road with a paid-off trailer, right? Because you know, trailer prices are ridiculous right now. So it's like maybe this is an option you could look into. So all in all, really, really good stuff. It's a two-part video. I'll link the second part in the. Uh, the first part was like the teardown. Second part is where they're all putting it together. So it looks very, very clean. So kudos to them. All right, and last little bit of news is if you're going to be in Louisville, Kentucky, from the 24th to the 26th, please check out the Mid-America Truck Show and I will be there from the 24th, March 24th. That's like in a couple of days if you're watching this when I uploaded it. So March 24th, 2022 to March 26th, 2022. So please stop by the, I don't know, I'll be bouncing around so maybe we'll run into each other. I'm gonna stop by the Mighty Products booth. They are a channel sponsor. So I really like working with Mighty Products and uh, all in all, pretty pumped. So I will see everyone there.